Hello builders, parents, and collectors. Welcome to the Creation Evaluation Station. And on this episode of Mock and Model Monday, we are going to be evaluating this. It's uh, the Gundam Lefret, only this is a special edition one, a limited edition, um, eco block one. Um, now I got this off eBay. Don't ask how much. I actually got it with two other uh, models as well. They were both, all three of them were released um, for a um, special release for 7-Eleven over in Japan. So you could only get it through there or uh, secondary market like I did with at eBay. Um, it's a high grade and it came out last year. So it's a brand new high grade. I figured both since this is a brand new model and people are interested in um, The Witch for Mercury since it's a new series out. Um, I do this plus it also gives me a chance to compare this with that RX 78 that I did previously that is an older high grade and see the difference in the quality and whatnot um, now this is gonna be a little different it's color scheme is gonna be off um, it's neon pink which I think is really cool neon pink and black um, it's funny because the Gundam Lefrith is kind of really hard to get your hands on right now even the normal one because it uh, it's just is that in the aerial it's been popular even in Japan it's hard to get your hands on um, so I figured I'd do this because I don't know when I will get a, a regular Lefrith I have one coming hopefully someday um, but this was a chance to to get one out early and uh, it's for a lot of good reasons to do it so um, I also, when I do get that Lefret, I'll do a review of it, but it's not going to be quite. I'm not going to. I'm not going to rate it. Like I'll, I'll rate this one, but basically, when I have a Gundam that's pretty much just a recolor, I'm not going to bother um, rating it. We are going to look at the pieces and stuff, see what the difference is, and compare them and see what any differences there are. I know for a fact that this one comes with some special stickers as you see here. Oh, let's look at this box. This is actually built together because this is just artwork. Um, there. There's that side. There's that with all the other details and information. Te like technical stuff. And that's the same as the other side. And of course the bottom is blank. And, uh, yeah, so this is going to be fun. I'm kind of curious to see the improvements of, on these. And uh, this is uh, pretty much a, a new Gundam. It's always fun to see how things change. So let's go open it up and see what's inside. We're ready to open this up. As you see, there's no plastic sealing it up, no shrink wrap, nothing. And that's because I got this off eBay. And it came directly from a Japanese seller, so it did not need to be wrapped up. This is how they are sold in Japan. Already can pop them open, just like that. So, let's see what we got in bags. We got a couple stickers. We have one, two, three bags of parts of a... Runners, which we'll open those up here in a moment to see them closer. Huh. And we have the instruction booklet here. No pictures in color. All black and white. Hmm. No color guide, but I don't think you want to paint this anyways. Um, it's supposed to be special colored. So let's open them up here in a second. All right, we've got all the runners laid out here. And we have one, two, and black. We've got one, two in pink, and then we have a mixed one here in pink. We got some transparent pink there for a blaster effect. And it's got some black and some trans gray as well. And then we have another small runner just for the uh, beam sabers and trans pink. We have our stickers here now. Uh, these don't look like stickers. I think these might be a uh, water slide decals or something. Um, the box said they were stickers, but they don't quite look like it. These do. 
Um, there's also some redundancy. You see these these pink stripes here. They look like they're the same ones there. So I'll have to figure that out when I do um, read the instructions. But uh, yeah, that's it. A lot of pink and black. It's going to look kind of cool. Got the little first all put together here. Now I've pulled off all of her accessories and we will look at them later in a bit moment because I just wanted to show off the posability for it. And we'll start with that. So we have the head here and it's on a ball joint giving it plenty of movement. Uh, the neck here does not really restrict it too much. Look up quite a ways down. Maybe a little bit restricted going down and it's got a side to side Rotation, you know, it's on a ball joint, can move all around, plenty, nothing really. <laughs> Though I did pull it right off there. <laughs> there you go. Uh, now we have the shoulders here. They are also on a ball joint, but they have a little bit more going on than that. Um, they have a ball joint, it lets it move around quite a bit. And of course, rotate. You can have her reach up in the air if you want. Um, but there is the shoulder piece here is also on a separate joint. If you can see that. So you can get move it out even more so that you can reach across the front of her. Um, like that. There's also a uh, upper arm twist oh and the uh the uh shoulder pads are also uh are on a joint as well um, so they are movable uh, we got a rotation upper arm rotation we got an elbow joint it only has one joint but it goes much further than 90 degrees so i got more than enough that you, that you need than you need um, and then the wrists here are on uh, ball joints. They are, uh, of course, be able to twist them. And they have a little jiggle room if you need them. Uh, but they are also still plenty uh, rigid, too. So they will hold all the weapons and stuff. And now here, down at the torso, there is a slight torso crunch. And... Uh, this is where there's also a weak point in this. Torso crunch and torso twist, instead of right down here at the hips, it's actually in the middle of the body. I don't mind that. The, the weak part here, which can be fixed with just a little bit of glue, is this here. As while you're moving around, this easily becomes detached. Um, I tried to see if something's not clicked in, but it seems to be nice and snug but as soon as you start moving the waist around a little bit that ends up popping out so a little bit of glue would fix that there's no moving parts in there that you have to worry about gluing and uh, not coming apart so it's not too big of a deal there um, now one interesting thing about this well it's a Gundam but it's a little bit different Gundam it doesn't have any like a uh, Waste plates, so you don't have those to worry about moving. There's no motion in them. Um, but as far as leg movement, we got a kick out to the side here. And if you have it come out a little bit further off to the side this way, you can get a little bit higher of a kick. Uh, but as far as doing normal splits, it can really only go like that. But it's... I think enough that, that you can use, but you could also, with no um, butt flaps, do ever come back this far. So you could easily do a split like that. <laughs> um, yeah, so she's got good running pose, we'll say that. <laughs> and as far as the knees here, move arm up. As far as the knees, we got two joints down here, and it bends quite a bit. Only thing blocking it is the, uh, not really blocking, but it does kick itself. So it's uh, pretty poseable. And this also has a nice poseable flap here. So you can 
keep that hidden. You know, if you want these boosters, she has rocket boosters on her knees, which I find that interesting. Um, but it allows for some interesting movement for sure, including just that one's on her back of her butt, back of her upper leg. Kind of below the butt, but it would be here. Yeah, uh, but it, interesting places to put rockets. Um, these would allow more for braking, but also I suppose they would give you upward lift as well if you get the leg move just right. But yeah, so she's got the double joints in the knees. And we got quite a bit here in the ankles. We got a joint here careful you go back too far it does pop off um, and you have bendable toes here heel and then you do have articulation in the ankle side to side um, like that it's on the stiff side so you don't have to worry about her having weak ankles um, but do be careful closing it so that you don't accidentally break it um, but they seem to be sturdy enough that I don't think that'll happen too much but that's it for the posability it's got some good posability um, I know some people like to see a complete split she doesn't quite do that but it's got enough there that it, it will get you plenty of nice poses out of it so, before we do too much with the accessories, just want a comparison shot here with uh, Gundam RX. I think he's going to be our our, our um, standard comparison, and this is the uh, the high grade version. It came out in 2015, and there's a bit of a height comparison with that. Um, definitely stands a little bit taller and some of the proportions are definitely different but that that nothing to do with the particular model it's more even with the the design of the Gundam um, you can tell just by looking at the Lofrith and the Ariel that they, they are different dimensions than uh, your regular Gundam uh, they don't seem quite so leggy like really long legs Gundams tend to look like they have really long legs I will bring in her shield here for a moment and show you it's connected. There's just a single little peg there. Got a much bigger shield than our <laughs> RX, but uh, I think it looks cool though. Straight up black and uh, she's got herself a bigger gun here too. You can see. Uh, that's it for that. Here again, once she is with her beam rifle and her shield. Also has the backpack unit on there. Um, the shield pieces can plug into that. And we got, you'll notice the, we got um, handles here on top for her uh, lightsabers. Which we will probably look at them next and also do something with the shield. There she is with her dual beam sabers and all her... Both her shield bits and also her beam rifle stored on her back. And uh, getting into quite the aggressive looking pose there. Um, now, we have one very important thing to test on this um, before we head back to the desk for our final evaluation. The last and most important part the black light test. After all, this is a neon pink color scheme. Is that cool or what? And I forgot to mention, yes, beam sabers actually go in with the blades up, so you could store them in uh, the actual beams in the hilts. So you can have everything on her without having to throw the accessories in the box or somewhere else. Back here at the desk, give this a final evaluation. But first, my final thoughts. I had a lot of fun putting this together. It's, uh, I had 
some difficulty, mainly because of the color scheme. Black on black would be a bit of a trouble. Um, but, uh, yeah, and I do want to remind you that this is from the prologue from The Witch of Mercury. So if you've seen The Witch of Mercury, but haven't seen the prologue, you might not be familiar with this mech. It is very much like the Ariel, though. Um, kind of kind of the prototype for the Ariel, if it's not a reef. The prefurbished aerial? I don't know. There's some mystery behind that with the story. Um, but yeah, the, this was really great. Um, and it's, it's, it's great seeing the uh, technology um, for designing these improve. Because I did the, the high grade um, grandpappy, the RX... 72, uh, wait, 78-2, um, and uh, which came out in 2015, and this came out in 2020. You can see the big difference. That one had polycaps, this one didn't. Not that I think polycaps are much different, uh, are terrible, although this has got probably some tighter joints, which are good where they're tight, and that may be because it doesn't use polycaps. I'm not sure. Um, but I really like kind of the gimmick here with this shield that also breaks off into different parts. It can be stored on the back. And it looks really good on the back. The back looks actually kind of bare back here um, if you don't have that on there. Bring out some of the details in the lining. You might want to do some kind of um, panel lining with this, especially on the back. It just looks like one giant pink blob. Um, even though that you, if you look closer, there's little lines and details all over in it. Um, but yeah, and like I said, the shield thing's cool. I like the weapon here, which the, the, you can have even parts from this added onto the, the weapon to some extent and beam in there, the special effect, you have to move the parts and it's, you don't, they, it's not parts for me. It's just. They're actually on hinges a little bit that you can pose out of the way a little bit to stick the blade in there and then close it back up. That neat. Posability is really well. They like so the, the worst part is that the that hip area where the, the pieces go together. They don't click in or aren't there isn't enough strong enough friction there to hold them into place. Thankfully there's no no uh, joint there, so if you wanted to put a little bit of glue in there to hold it together you'd be probably golden because um, then you can actually use the waist articulation a little bit easier. So there's a little bit, well, it rotates and then there's a little bit of pivot as well to do an ab crunch. But because of that lower piece being so easy, it has a tendency just to pop off. Now difficulty putting this together, uh, not, that's like the, the RX, um, had some really really tiny pieces that I had problems putting on the head. This one wasn't too much of a problem. I did have a little bit of problems with the head, but that had something to do with the colors and the color separation. I wasn't quite sure how the parts were supposed to fit together, and uh, but other than that, it wasn't too too bad. Mm, no, not really. I did have one issue, but that was a me issue. I put a piece on upside down, not realized it. Then there were other pieces that were supposed to go on, and I could not figure out how it goes on. Um, <laughs> it was part of the torso. Uh, but that was a me problem. Uh, not really a problem with the model. Yeah, and, and the overall design of this is great. Um, the color separation. Now, I I don't know if the Lifrith has, the regular Lifrith has different um it should have the same colors, I imagine. Um, but there was two hot pink runners and two black runners, and then one that was mixed. And I don't know what the colors on the mixed one looks like on the Lafrith, so definitely get some different color variations. Um, probably that. The, the the color separation is pretty good. It's uh, not quite as good as I would say an entry grade one, but as far as high grade. And even the the last one I put together, it's it's about decent with that. Um, 
So overall, I ended up giving this a 10. Um, there are some minor detriments, and of course the biggest one is the appearance if you just don't like this, the fact that one, it doesn't look like the show, and two, you're not crazy over hot pink and black or whatever. Although it looks really good under a black light, as you saw. Um, so yeah, that those that's my grade for this is an actual ten. Your your uh, you may vary on that depending on uh, you know your taste, but overall it was a good solid build. Um, whether you like the color scheme or not is your decision. Um, which let me know down in the description what you do think of this, the color scheme, the design. Um, I really like this huge short sh shield, and there's neat things you can do with it and, and stuff. Um, comes apart, and how many pieces? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven pieces. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think in the description. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And if you're new here, hit the subscribe button. Um, and if you're not new here, just check make sure you are still subscribed. I've heard funny business happening before on YouTube. Um, but uh, yeah, also follow me. Hit the, the, the bell so you get notifications. But follow me on either Facebook or Twitter, which there are links down in the in the description, so you can get notifications that way. I tend to be a lot faster than YouTube uh, getting out my notifications, which is annoying me. Uh, but uh, yeah, do that and you'll be up to date on my videos, which would be great for you, since I do kind of make them sequential. We're slowly, you know, moving up to hard, more difficult models and stuff. Uh, I'm not going to be doing a, a, a master grade next. Actually, that's one thing I wanted to mention in this video is my next mock and model video might be two weeks out or whatever because I'm going to be doing a mock next and I don't know how long it's going to take me. So it might be a, a two, maybe even three weeks before I get that video out. Um, it's going to be a mock going to be a bit of a battle or a build the challenge so I'm gonna actually probably do it in like two parts do the build challenge part of this and then I'm actually gonna go back and take my own parts and add on to it to get a finished product that I like um, but yeah that's something to look forward to but just to inform you yeah there might be a couple weeks before I get the next one of these out. Um, then after that, we'll probably go back to some kind of. I don't have a lot of mocks playing, but this one I kind of had bought a couple sets that I wanted to, to do stuff with. And uh, yeah, uh, so uh, definitely subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can uh, find out, see that, and uh, find out more about that. And uh, that's it for me here at the Creation Evaluation Station. Oh, I and I do have a Patreon link in the description there's not much there yet it's just a dollar um minimum amount uh to help the channel grow uh more directly oh anything you do you know uh notification or notifications comments likes subscriptions sharing it with other people as well the channel um uh, will help it grow and I would greatly appreciate it. Now, once again, I'm signing off here at the Creation Evaluation Station, reminding you that creativity is key.